Good afternoon, my friends. Oh, I remember I listened to yesterday's video when the air conditioner kept coming on and off, and I didn't know it. I didn't know you could hear it in the video, but you could, so I turned it off for a few minutes here. It's not hot. It's not hot in here, but it helps me breathe better to have the air conditioner on, so that's why it's on. I'm going to share something with you from Isaiah tonight, this evening, this afternoon, whatever it is. I don't even have a clue what time it is. The sun's still up. I don't think it'll be up for long, though. I, right, my next door neighbor over this way is the little town's water tower, the little town that I live in. It's water towers, my neighbor, right across the street here. And late in the evening, every evening, oh, there's Kitty Callie right there, there. She just jumped down off the desk. Late every evening, there are about 30 or 40 vultures that fly in from, I guess, hunting meat all day and they roost up on top of that water tower all night and it has been really enjoyable for me the last three years to watch them. I'll, it, sometime it'll take them 15 minutes to land. They'll circle around and around and around like they're looking for the perfect parking spot or something. I don't know what they're doing but finally they'll come down and land on the water tower and stay there all night. And then just about sun up, they take off again. And they're gone all day until about this time in the evening, they'll come back. And in the wintertime, they're, they're all gone. I don't know where they go, but they're smarter than me. I stay here in the wintertime, and they take off somewhere where it's warm, I would imagine. That's what I need to do. Goodness gracious, y'all. This old Texas Gulf Coast redneck. In three years, I hadn't got used to all the snow and ice and sleet and hail and all the stuff that they have up here. It is ridiculous. And last last winter, we had I don't know how many days in the minus in the minus twenties, and even one time minus thirty one, minus thirty one right here in my little town. <laughs> uh, I, I thought you had to go to Alaska or Siberia to get that kind of weather. And my garage had five feet of snow up against it for a while. And my house didn't. My house had two or three feet. But I've got a detached garage out back, and it had five feet of snow around it at one time last year. I don't, I don't get out. I don't drive during the winter. I park my truck in the garage, and it stays there all winter. I've got Texas tires on it. I need to get some snow tires, some all-weather type tires to put on it, but I hadn't done that yet. I, the tires I got on it still got some good tread, and I don't want to waste that, so whenever the tread wears down more, then I'll get some snow tires or all-weather tires on it. But I, I don't go anywhere in the winter. I make sure I've got enough food and water right here, and I just hibernate here, uh, and thankfully, you know, the power line that comes to the house comes from the alley in the back all the way to the house, and last year it had icicles three or four feet long hanging off of it, and those things are heavy. I'm surprised that the weight of them didn't break that power line, but it never did, and I had a generator. When I first moved here, I bought a brand new generator to run the whole house, air conditioners and heaters and everything, and I never used it. And uh, oh, a couple of months ago, I guess, I decided to sell this place and move back down south. And um, I was selling it fully furnished because all the furniture in here I bought brand new three years ago, and some of it has has never even been set on, and it's nice furniture. So I was going to sell the house fully furnished to try to uh, lure a buyer into buying it real quick so I could get out of here before winter. And then I got sick. And uh, anyway, I, I did get a contract on it. 
and before I got sick and <clears throat> uh, the guy didn't want any of this he wanted the furniture but he didn't want any of this stuff in the garage my uh, air compressor and my generator and all kind of gardening equipment and uh, gardening carts and hoes and shovels and rakes and leaf rakes and snow shovel all that kind of stuff and I had a well I've told you that air compressor already uh, car ramps to drive your car up on to change the oil and so forth I can't do that anymore but I used to and I brought them with me when I moved up here but I can't get down on the ground and do it like I used to uh, but anyway I gave all of that to a friend here in town and now I wish I had my generator back but in three years, even through last winter, I never had to use it, so I should be okay. But anyway, I want to share something with you this evening from Isaiah. And I don't know how much witnessing y'all do. I know it seems that most of my audience is uh, already Christians, which is good. I would like some non-christians to come on here too because i share jesus and they need jesus but I, I don't know this channel for some reason does not attract the non-christians i've had two or three that i know of and two of them i know have got saved and the other one i never heard back from but anyway uh If you ever witness to a Jew, Isaiah 53 is a good chapter to read. They will not read the New Testament. A Jew will not read the New Testament. And a lot of the young people, a lot of the young Jews, they haven't even read the Bible, not even the Old Testament. That's sad. And it's sad that None of the Jews will read the New Testament. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe Jesus is a Messiah. Most of them don't. There are some that do. But anyway, so, uh, Isaiah 53 is a good chapter to read to non-Messianic Jews. And let me share it with you right now. And there's, there's another one or two that's good to read to them also, also in Isaiah and I'll find them and share with you sometime soon. But Isaiah 53, verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And y'all, Think about the words that I'm reading. Don't just have your ears listening. Have your heart listening. Let your heart hear what I'm reading to you. And every time you pick up this book, as I've told you before, first pray and ask the Holy Spirit to tutor you as you read God's Holy Word or as I read God's Holy Word to you, ask the Holy Spirit to tutor you. And he will, and it will help you and it sure has helped me and it still helps me to understand God's word he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not Y'all think about who's, who Isaiah is talking about here. And this is way back in the Old Testament. Way back. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions for our sins was he wounded 
he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Who is Isaiah talking about? Way back in the Old Testament. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid him, laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Father. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, dumb means didn't speak, didn't make a noise, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see, he sh yeah, he shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, not all, but many, for he shall bear their iniquities, who bore our iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. You and me, friends, we are the transgressors. We are the sinners. We are the ones for whom Jesus died. He went to the cross without a sound, without any opposition. He voluntarily went. He didn't have to go. He could have called 10 million angels to come and rescue him, but he didn't. He went to the cross voluntarily, and he died for our sins. And that was way back in the Old Testament before Jesus was ever born. Isaiah was prophesying what the Messiah would be like. And there, like I said, there's other prophecy in there also about Jesus I will share with you very soon. Friends, if you're not a Christian, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can do to earn your salvation. It is a gift of God to you through Jesus Christ. Jesus died for your sins. Your sins will keep you out of heaven and put you into hell for all eternity. And we all are sinners. We need a Savior. We need a Redeemer. There is only one person that ever lived that could bear the iniquities of us all. 
and that person was Jesus Christ. And the reason he is able to do it is because he never committed not one sin. And the reason he never committed one sin is because he is God made flesh. So he was the only perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. He died for you and me so that we can enjoy eternity in heaven. He did all the work necessary, and that work involved going to the cross and being killed, dying, being buried, arising out of the grave three days later because he is God. He was witnessed by over 500 people alive after he was arisen out of the grave, and many witnessed him as he ascended into heaven where he is today. And just before he ascended into heaven, he said he was going to a place that we knew not of to prepare a place for us so that where he was, someday we could be there with him. And that day is coming very soon, very soon, friends. Very soon we're going to be raptured out of here to go home with him for all eternity. I want you to be part of that rapture. To, to do that, you've got to believe that he did everything that I just said he did. He died for the sins of the world. You've got to believe that with all your heart, soul, and mind. He is your Savior. He is your Redeemer. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's all you've got to do, friend, is believe. Nothing, no work for you to do. Just believe with all your might, or with all your strength and might. Believe in what Jesus did. All right, y'all, that's today's video. Yesterday I felt awesome. I did a lot of housework. I did all the laundry, and I had a lot of laundry to do. I even cooked a little. Today I didn't feel so good. <laughs> I did do a little bit of work today, but not near as much as I did yesterday. I just, I don't know what's going on with me. A, a new doctor called today, a doctor that specializes in uh, con congestive heart failure. I've got congestive heart failure also. And she said something about uh, kidneys. You know, my kidneys have failed three times and they resuscitated them or did whatever they did to bring them back where they started working again. So I told her, yeah, I'd be glad to see her. I don't know, my my new family doctor told her about me and she wanted to see me. So I told her, yeah, I'd see her. So I have an appointment to see her uh, next Friday, I think. So I'm, I'm getting to see a lot of doctors. Nicole did not come today. I didn't even hear from her today. She came yesterday and reroute my legs and sat and chatted for a while my legs are still like an elephant's yesterday the doctor started my, the, my new family doctor I, I don't remember if I told you or not if I did tell you I apologize for repeating myself but my new family doctor consulted with my cardiologist, my heart doctor, to see what they could do to get some of this fluid off my body, because I've got, my body is like an elephant from all the fluid, and <clears throat> I was on diuretics. I, the, my, my former family doctor just about killed me with diuretics. I didn't know it, you know, I trusted her, whatever. She prescribed for me, I took, and that's what killed my, or didn't kill my kidney. Well, it did kill them temporary, but I was in the emergency room here 
for about three hours. They were working on me, trying to wake up my kidneys or, you know, make my kidneys start working again. And they couldn't get them to come around. So they took me by ambulance to the big hospital south of here, 40 minutes south of here. And I don't know what they did. And I was pretty much out of it by the time I got to that hospital. And I, I don't even remember getting there or anything until a day or two later. So I don't know what they did to me inside the ambulance, but they knocked me out or did something to me because I don't remember that right. I remember getting in the ambulance, but I don't remember anything else. But anyway, they got my kidneys woke up and working again, but they stopped two more times while I was in that hospital. I was in ICU there in the uh, cardiac ICU because I started having heart problems too. I don't know what prompted that, but they put me in cardiac ICU and was working on my heart and my kidneys and they got everything working good again and, and I guess everything's still working. I get blood work done every week. They are keeping a close eye on me now and anyway the my cardiologist and my new family doctor got together and came up with a diuretic for me to take that and it's just one, not four or five, like my former doctor had me on. So I started that diuretic yesterday, and I peed all night. And I didn't think when I picked up the prescription at the pharmacy yesterday, but I, I picked it up and took one. You know, it's a new med, so I took one. I'd already had all my other meds for the day, and I didn't even think about it making me pee. Well, it made me pee all night, so... <laughs> So I didn't get much sleep last night, y'all. Uh, but this morning, and it didn't say whether to take it at day or night. It just said take one daily. And so this morning, around 10 o'clock, I took the one for today. So I've been peeing all day today, and and hopefully I'll be able to sleep tonight now and not be jumping up every 20 or 30 minutes to go pee again. But... You know, after 24 hours, uh, my, my legs are still just like an elephant. And, uh, you know, Nicole wrapped them real good yesterday when she was here, so they still got the wrapping on them. And when when she takes that wrapping off to redo it, my, my legs are skinny. But the part below the wrapping and above the wrapping looks like an elephant leg so I don't know you know I don't know what good well it, it squeezes the water out of that area up up but I, I think it just makes my upper leg fatter or something I don't know I don't know how that works but anyway I'm doing everything the doctors say it's hard for me to do sometimes and when I was in a hospital over, the, the big hospital over there, they've got these alarms in the bed, in the bed and in the, I had a recliner in, in my room there also, and they had one in the seat of the recliner. And if I got up, if I got out of bed without calling a nurse, or if I got up from sitting in that recliner without calling a nurse, that alarm goes off. <laughs> Y'all, can you imagine having to call a nurse every time you had to go to the bathroom or to do anything? If if I sit up on the edge of the bed to eat my breakfast, lunch, or dinner, the alarm would go off. Because the cafeteria people that brought the food in there, they didn't know how to turn the alarm off. I was supposed to call a nurse before I set up, but I forgot all the time, so they were running into my room pretty often <laughs> to turn the alarm off. Even even as sick as I was, I don't like to sit still. You know, I like to get up and do stuff and move around and all, and I think they were getting tired of me getting up without calling them first. But I finally I, I figured out how to unhook the alarm so the last four or five days I was there I had the alarm on the bed and on the chair unhooked and 
So the alarm never went off for me after that. And, and just when they checked me out of the hospital, I was just, I was just about, I was packed up, ready to leave. Nicole came and picked me up and I was just fixing to walk out of the room. I, I remember those alarms, so I ran back over there and there was a nurse in, in the room with us, you know, and uh, I ran over there. I said, oh, I got these alarms unhooked. I better hook them up before I leave. And she laughed. The nurse laughed and Nicole shook her head. I, Nicole knew about it. I had told her and she fussed at me because that, that's a hospital she works at. But she doesn't work on patients like me. She just does hip and knee replacements. And thank God, knock on wood, that's not a problem I got. Uh, my knees and hips are fine as far as I know. That's it, y'all. I like spending time with you. I like flapping my jaws. I, I got Kitty Callie here to talk to, but she doesn't talk back. I don't, well, y'all don't either. It's like I'm sitting here talking to a camera, and if anybody came to the door or passed by or something, they'd think I was cuckoo, and maybe I am, but that's who I am now. <laughs> I, I love and appreciate y'all. Y'all's comments just blow me away. I, I love you, and I love your comments. And I didn't, uh, last night, the last 24 hours since the last video, I did not have to delete one comment. So I thank God for that. And I, I listen to preachers all day long. I have an earbud in my ear and wherever I'm going, you know, in the house, whatever I'm doing, I've got a preacher preaching in my ear. And there's several I listen to a lot and... I just love learning more about God and Jesus and heaven and what I'm supposed to be doing for the Lord and what he expects of us Christian people and so forth. And so I've, I've found several preachers that I really enjoy and I listen to them all the time. And there's several, uh, I guess, evangelists that they do collaborations a lot and I like listening to them and I like that uh, occasionally different ones will have question and answer sessions and I I enjoy listening to those too uh, questions about the Bible question and answer sessions about the Bible so I listen to sermons probably 10 or 12 hours a day every day I don't go to church. Uh, Nicole invited me to her church, and I went two or three times. But it's it's sits up on a hill, and when oh when I went was last winter. She came and got me and took me. She's got I don't know four or five vehicles. And one of them is a Jeep, a four-wheel drive Jeep. It'll go anywhere, and it's got big snow tires on it, so she can go anywhere. And she's got a, a real nice, big, full-size SUV and uh, uh, several other cars. And they're, every one of her vehicle, vehicles are white. <laughs> I've never owned a white vehicle, and that's all she's got. But anyway, she took me out there, but it sits way up on a hill. And the parking lot, the you know, where you park, is not at the top of the hill. Just the church is at the top of the hill. So you got to walk up the side of that hill. And I, it was hard for me to do. I, I'm crippled from the waist down. And I can walk, but I've got to use a walker. I'm sitting on the seat of my walker right now. And uh, it, it was just hard for me to do. And I had, uh, you know, those four-legged walking canes. I had one of those, and that son of a gun was very heavy-duty. It was strong. And one of the times that I passed out recently, I fell on top of it and broke it in half. And now I can't find one like it. I've got canes like this. I've got two similar to this. But these are lightweight and flimsy, and I don't trust it to put a whole lot of weight on it. 
and I like that four footed one when I got where I was going I could just set it there and it would stand up by itself because it had four feet on the bottom this one just has one foot and it won't stand up so I gotta find some place to lean it against or whatever and so I'm still looking for a four footed one if y'all see one let me know I really don't care what price is I they're a whole lot safer for me and that's what I want and they, they've got some at Walmart and some at my pharmacy here, but they're cheap and flimsy like this cane I just showed you. And I don't want those. I want the big silver, heavy-duty, very strong ones. But when I was going down, that was the time uh, Nicole was going to drive my truck. And I don't remember where she and I was going to go, but uh, we were walking out to my truck and the passenger door was by the back door and the driver's door is on the other side and she had walked around to get in the driver's seat and I was walking toward the passenger door and just as I got to the truck I fainted and uh, my shoulders hit the running board on, on the truck and the back of my ball head hit the door of the truck and put a dent in my truck and I, I woke up hearing her scream oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> just screaming and she's a doctor she she got me uh, sit, sitting up on the ground and called the ambulance. The ambulance came and got me and hauled me away. But that I was using that cane and I fainted and I landed on top of it. I don't know how it got behind me, but it got between me and the truck and I landed on top of it and it snapped that thing in half like it was a toothpick. So it's gone. It can't be fixed. Well, I, mean, I guess if somebody knew how to weld, they could stick a rod up inside of it and weld it back together or something. I don't know, but that, that's a good idea. I, I didn't think about that until now, and there's several welders here in town. I, I need to check into that. Cause it's hollow. You know, it's hollow, so they could put a rod up inside of it and tack well the top and bottom and it'd be like a brand new cane and if the well looked ugly I could spray paint it silver again anyway that that's a good idea I put it out on the back porch to uh, have it hauled away with the trash and then I forgot to put it in the trash so it's still out there I need to talk to a welder and see if I can get that done that's what I need to do all right, y'all, I don't know how long I've talked. I don't have my glasses on, and I can't see the time meter on there, but I know it's been a long time. So thank you all for your patience. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the kind words. I really, really enjoy them. And I hope and I pray that some of the messages that I give to you will help you improve your Christian life, help you to be a better witness for Jesus help you to be a stronger Christian. I, I needed everything in God's Word, and I read it. I still read his book for hours. I love that book. Like I told you yesterday, if I could take one possession with me to heaven, it would be my Bible. But, you know, the word is going to be there when I get there waiting for me. So that's all I need, y'all. I don't need anything else. But I have really enjoyed. When when I first got saved, my, my dad was a, a Baptist deacon. And my mom was very active in church. Very active in church. All the time. It's like, like she was on the payroll or something. And she wasn't. But she was always doing stuff at church. And I was just rebellious. Uh, you know, not ugly. I respected my parents. I loved them with all my heart. They were the best parents a person could hope to have. I just did not believe all that mess, you know, and I just rejected all of that. And I rejected it until I was 50 or 51 years of age. And mom died before I got saved. Dad was still alive. Dad got to see me as a new Christian, and he was happy. He was really happy. I just wish mom could have seen me, but I'll see her in heaven before long. And I'm sure she knows. I'm sure she 
rejoiced on the day I got saved. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. But y'all, we need to live in God's word and in prayer. And we, we can pray while we're doing just about anything. You know, I pray out loud when I'm driving. I pray or sing, sing hymns out loud when I'm uh, on the John Deere mowing the grass. I, I can't get on the John Deere anymore, but when, when I was able to get on it, I, I would either pray out loud or sing hymns out loud while I was uh, mowing. Um, several weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, after I got out of the hospitals, I had someone put new mower blades on the mower deck of my John Deere because once it was on it, they were flat wore out. And I hadn't got to try it out yet. I, the yard got mowed one time, but uh, it was done by somebody else, not by me, not by my John Deere. When I was giving away and selling everything because I thought I was going to move, I, I didn't sell or give away the John Deere. It's going to be the last thing I was going to get rid of because I didn't know where I was going. I wanted to buy an acre or two, heavily wooded acre or two, way out in the country and build a little tiny house on it for me to live in. And I thought I might need the John Deere there. But, y'all, land has got so ridiculously high. It would take all the money I had just to buy the land, and then I wouldn't have any money left to build a tiny house on. So I kind of scrapped that idea. I don't know what I was going to do if I'd have sold the house for good. So I love this house. I, I like this house a lot. It's tiny. It's the smallest house I ever owned. It was built in 1910, and it's sturdy. It is very sturdy. It was well built, not like so many today. And it was totally refurbished and modernized, updated just before I bought it. I was the first person to own it after it was refurbished. And it's like a brand new house, but it's uh, whatever, 114 years old or something. And I, I really love this house. It has a, a very small basement, which doubles as a storm shelter. They have a lot of tornadoes up here, but I, I can't get down the stairs to get in it. So I'll just, if one, well, there have been several since I've been here, but they were small ones, didn't do any damage except a few shingles blew away off the roof. That was the only damage. Uh, one of them caught me. I was out in the yard picking up lawn furniture that the wind had blown out into the yard and one of them came through and picked me up and slammed me down on the sidewalk. That was in the winter. It was minus 10 or minus 11 degrees outside that when that happened. And snow was about eight inches deep and it picked me up and the sidewalk was covered with snow, with eight inches of snow. But it picked me up and slammed me down on the sidewalk. Broke my right shoulder and my left arm and that's one of the bones in my right leg I forgot which bone but that was the first winter I was here at December 4th of 2021 so I don't go outside in the winter now <laughs> not for anything but uh I guess that was probably the strongest tornado that came through since I've been here there's been a lot of small ones the house has stood and it's probably withstood many tornadoes over the many years it's been here. And, you know, it's all fresh paint, fresh carpet in the living room where I am now and in the bedroom and in the, in the two bedrooms and tile in all the other rooms. New, new tile, new carpet. And I don't like carpet, but it's, it was new when I bought the place, and I wasn't going to rip it out just to put tile down, so I got carpet in three rooms. But the 
second bedroom so full of stuff. That's my storage room. It's so full of stuff. I've got a little narrow pathway to walk right down the middle. I got stuff on the right and I got stuff on the left. So I got, I, I used to do a lot of home canning and a lot of gardening. And I've got some old videos showing some of it. But uh, I, I did some gardening the first two years I was here. I didn't do any this year. I didn't feel like it this year. But the first two years I did some gardening and I did a lot of home canning the first year I was here and I've still got all of that stored. Well, not all of it, but probably a third of it still stored in the second bedroom. And I've got a lot of my tools that I didn't want to leave out in the garage stored in that bedroom. And I got uh, my, my last ex-wife is from Ukraine and there, she and I are still friends. She she moved back home after her divorce and <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that she could get here that she couldn't cannot get over there so she has me buy stuff for her here and ship it to her and I've got two or three boxes of that stuff I need to ship out to her in the next few days or weeks or whatever she asks about them every day and I just they're in a box but they're not packed I need to get packing. I've got packing. I got to get it all ready to ship and addressed and all that good stuff and take them to the post office. When when she first moved over there, she took, I, I think it was seven of the biggest pieces of luggage that they made. I, I don't remember what was allowed. You know, one or two was allowed with your ticket. And then anything extra, anything over that, you had to pay extra for. She, she paid twelve or fourteen hundred dollars to ship those other pieces of luggage. <clears throat> she had more clothes than anybody I ever knew, and some of them, about four or five years old, still had the tags on them, still had the plastic bag over over them. That she bought and never used. She just liked to collect clothes, and she collected dolls. The the big big expensive dolls that come comes in boxes and stuff the old ones from the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s and and she paid a lot of money for those dolls and she, I don't know I don't remember how many she had but when she moved back to Ukraine she wanted me to ship all those dolls to her I spent over six thousand dollars in postage just postage six thousand dollars mailing her dolls to her and now uh, she she didn't even unwrap all of them. She got them sitting in one, in one of the, She has a house over there that she inherited from her grandparents. It's next door to her mom, and her mom is still alive. So, But she doesn't live in her house. She has her dolls and stuff stored in her house. But she lives in the house with her mom. Her mom has a piano, and my ex-wife plays a piano. So I think that's why she lives in the house with her mom, but they're they're right next to each other. On the, They got like three-fourths of an acre, and both houses are on that three-fourths of an acre, and, and they do a lot of gardening. Her mom is 80-something years old, and every year she's out there gardening, and she has every square inch of that land that is not taken up by the houses or sidewalk is gardens. She's got gardens all over the place. And she does a lot of home canning and pickling, uh, you know, fermenting and pickling. That woman, I, she'll probably live to be 110 years old. She just goes, she goes a whole lot more than I do. And I'm not near her age. But anyway, I, I have yak way too long and I apologize. I'll let y'all go and I'll, if I feel like it, I'll see y'all tomorrow. If I don't feel like it, I'll do a short video, a, vi a video short for you. Uh, right now, I don't think I'd feel like doing one, but I just did one, so you got one. And it and it's got a lot of redneck rant with it too, so you got a bonus, <laughs> or the opposite. <laughs> I love y'all. God bless you, friends.